we're going to dive right in. It is 1.30 Mountain Standard Time, 3.30 3 Eastern Standard Time for y'all. So we are going to talk about, ooh, give me one second. We are going to talk about fundraising for fundraising events for volunteers. So volunteers are such an important part of your event because they make everything come together and happen and they give their free service to you. So it's something that we want to make sure they have a good experience when they're signing up so you can gain more loyal volunteers for the future. So my name is Whitney Taylor. I'm a senior account manager here at Give Sign Up, Run Sign Up. I work mostly on the Run Sign Up side and I dabble a little bit on the Give Sign Up side. So what we are going to cover today, we're gonna to talk about the integrated volunteer system. And then we're gonna get into what that setup process looks like. From there, we'll, we'll talk about what those definitions are and what that actually means in the system when you do go through and set it up. We will also dive into your volunteer data, the information that you can collect, and then what you can do with that information. We have some advanced options for you if you are interested in using them. And then if we have any time left over, we can go over a couple of your questions. So let's get into it. Aside from the obvious reason of why you would have the benefit of having an integrated volunteer system, having consistency between your user experience as well as your participants user experience, we have the ability to place a volunteer tab on your event page. So you are basically utilizing your event page as a one stop shop. They come because they want to maybe participate in your event or learn more about your organization. And from there, they can either sign up to do your event, they can sign up to volunteer, or they could sign up to do both. We also have the ability for volunteers to access their volunteer assignments and all the information regarding volunteering in the same portal as they would for an event. So they have one profile and they can use that for volunteering as well as participating. There is a single source for all your race data, which is king for everybody that loves to deal with the data. It's so nice to be able to have your data all in one place. You can also report on specific things like let's say your participant participated and volunteered year over year. So maybe the people that are loyal to your event or your organization, you can definitely reach out to them and send them a little thank you email. This just gives you the opportunity to see that and then take action on that. So again, some more information about our volunteer platform. It is 100% free to use. It is included in the setup process when you go through give sign up or run sign up. It is always available on your dashboard. It is very clear. It says volunteer right on your dashboard. You can make it as simple as possible. It could take you five minutes to set up or you could add some complexities in there and create an entire email system. We have detailed communication tools and we also have the ability to allow certain people like your task coordinators, which we'll explain in a moment, um, have access to their specific tasks. So you can kind of take that weight and delegate to, to people that you believe will lead well. So let's just get straight into the setup. We're gonna first talk about the task setup. So this is, think of it as like your base. This is gonna be potentially swag bag stuffing, pre-event setup, whether that be popping up tables and putting flower bouquets on the middle of your tables or serving alcohol um, or an award ceremony. You can have these specific tasks that people can sign up for and it, it needs to be broad. You're, if you have like, for instance, pre-event setup, you could have those subtasks of table setup, uh, chair setup, those certain things are not going to go in your task setup. You want the broad overview base of your task in the task setup. And the way you set that up is simply by putting in the task title. You can add additional information, a location, 
I highly recommend both of those. The more detail that you can give your volunteers up front, the more likely they are to register. The you also run the risk if you don't provide that information of receiving a lot of emails from your volunteers in addition to the people that are signing up for the event. So you're having to manage both of those. It's much easier if you just put the information up front, they know exactly what they're getting into and they can move forward. You can set age limits. So this would be, for example, let's say you're serving alcohol at your event. You don't want somebody that's under the age of 21 serving alcohol. So you could put an age limit for a task such as that. You have your private and public ability. So 99% of the tasks that you create should be public. You want people to register for them. A unique circumstance where it would be private or where you would maybe wanna use that task password is if you have like a cross country team or a sponsor that has a group of people that's gonna come do that specific task for you and you've already set that aside. So it can be private, you can grant them access to that and nobody will ever see that that task existed or you do the password protected and just that team has the password. And then the task coordinators. So we're gonna get into that on this slide, just a little more detail, your task coordinator can be the person that you trust that can lead that specific task. So once you grant them access as a task coordinator, they have the ability to view the volunteers on that specific task, they can add volunteers and they can essentially like manage and email that list. So these are going to be if you do have specific people that you trust, that will lead certain tasks and you can have one person lead multiple tasks. You just need to enter in their first name, last name, email, and they are good to go. So this next one, I just wanna show you a quick demo. I'm gonna see if I can do this right. <laughs> a quick demo of um, the back end. I just like walk through that initial first setup page. Now bear with me because I wanna make sure that we do this correct. Okay, so this is where you'll see the volunteer tab. It is truly on the back end. It is just a section volunteers and then we get into the setup. So you'll see here the one the things that I wanted to point out the ability to download your data right here, the ability to jump to specific tasks. This is for people that have 20 different tasks that they need filled, you can jump to it directly. And then once I do that, I can do my task title. I also have the ability to add my task coordinator. I can remove a task. I can also add additional tasks. So you'll see all of the action items are in green and they are fairly obvious. It is a very simple, straightforward process. All right, jumping back in to the presentation. All right, so moving on to the second step would be the time slots and resources. So with your time slots and resources, this is going to be very important for those tasks because you're gonna have tasks that might go for eight hours, nine hours, but you're going to find very few volunteers that will actually dedicate that much time to your organization or provide their help. So if you break them up into smaller increments, you're more likely to get volunteers that will join in. So creating those time slots is key. Another item with the minimum maximum. So this is what a situation that you would dive into if you were, let's say, setting up chairs or setting up tables, you might be able to accomplish that goal with two people, but it would be fantastic and a lot faster if you had four. That's where you would use that minimum maximum. It's like your bare minimum people that you need to execute on this versus like, let's make this the best experience ever. Your second section on the second step is the resource needed. So there's a warning here because multiple people have done it. So if it's something that you've done or if it's something that you accidentally do in the future, we completely get it because we see it all the time. The resource needed is not your to do list for you. It is not something that you are going to put out your 50 different things that you need to get before you can go live with your volunteers because the public can see it. So your volunteers are going to jump in here and be like, dang, 
she's got a lot on her plate or he's got a lot on her on his plate. That's not what you want. You can keep your to-do list. I have like 50 sticky notes right now on my desk. Like you can keep those somewhere else. The resources needed is maybe something like, let's say you need, you're doing like a book drive and you need 50 books or you're doing, I don't know, you're building something and you need materials and you're asking people if they have them. That's kind of what the resources needed would be because people can reach out to you and say, hey, I have five children's books that I can donate to you. So that's the purpose of that specific section. Now diving into the volunteer data, this is where we're going to talk about your volunteer, what data you're going to be collecting for your volunteers and how to do that. So it's similar if you have been in our platform for give sign up or run sign up, it's similar to the setup there where we have our required fields that you can either enable or disable. And then we have our custom question section. And with the custom questions, you also have the ability to add that custom question logic if you would like. So just kind of a little more detail about that. The required questions, let's say for volunteers, most of the time you don't need to know their gender, you don't need to know their date of birth, you just need to know the bare basics, their first name, last name, and email. Custom questions could be something like if you're going to be feeding them, maybe asking if they're vegan, dairy-free, gluten-free, certain things like that. And then the question logic would be if you have questions that you want to ask specific task groups, that's where the question logic would come in. And then on to our advanced options. Now, some of these advanced options you may not need to use, but I just want to go over them in case it sparks your interest. We've talked about some one of these, the password protection, that would be in place of your of hiding the task altogether, um, or let's say you have that group that you have maybe a list of people that you want to do specific tasks, you can use the password protection. The task overlap is a really cool feature on our platform for your ambitious volunteers that just want to help you in every area that decide to sign up for multiple tasks in the same exact time frame. this is going to restrict them from doing it. It's going to let them know that they're trying to sign up for too many tasks at the same time and they're not able to do so. And then just the volunteer communication, allowing volunteers to leave comments gives them a little bit of power, I guess you could say, of just feeling like they're involved in what you're doing and they're going to be able to provide their feedback. And then if you were to listen to their feedback, that would kind of take it that step further, like, wow, you're really, you're hearing me, I'm here for you, I'm going to support you moving forward. The email customization with our volunteer setup is again very similar to what we have in our platform for the other areas whether that for your event or your race uh, for instance you can send specific emails to specific tasks which gives you the opportunity to add more content and add more description to exactly what they're doing why they're doing it where they need to be etc and then you can also set up a switch task email. So if somebody were to come in and they sign up to set up tables and then they you're they end up switching to the breakdown of everything, they're going to get an email letting them know that they switched that task and you're also going to be able to see that. We also have some additional email communication tools. This is if you want to do mass emailing to your volunteers. This is really helpful if you're if it's like last minute or if it's just a couple of maybe a day before and then the night before your actual event takes place, letting them know that they're going to jump in and be a volunteer for you. We have special communication tags that you can also use that kind of brings the personalization to the email. They feel more like you're speaking to them. These special tags could look something like a first name 
putting in a specific email address if you want them to contact somebody the day of if they're having issues. Uh, and then also the task, which putting in their task in their email, just in case they forget, because that happens often. Even if you send it to them 30 minutes before, they might not know what they're volunteering for. It's okay. And then <laughs> when we get into our reports, the reports are really helpful. I love the summary report. The summary report is going to show you where you're at, your progress with getting volunteers for your event. It gives you a dashboard that's going to show you if you've met your criteria, if you're on your way, or if you have nothing. You'll also get your volunteer report that will give you all of the data that you asked to be collected in your volunteer report. We're going to kind of look at a breakdown of each. So for this one specifically, you can see the task at hand. You can see the different time slots with the task. So it will give you not only so keg handler. I have that three times because I have three different time slots with that. And then we have our minimum reached our more needed. And then if we were to well, I guess there's one where you are at like 100% complete. That is green. So I like the color coordination. It kind of just jumps out at you. And then, of course, our volunteer report, which is similar to an export in the system where you just get your basic data and you can manage those participants here as well. So on the next page, you'll see where I can go in and I could update their information. Let's say they don't log in to change their information. I could change that for them. I could also resend their confirmation email here. And this one is just a quick example of what that email notification looks like for the task coordinator. So your task coordinator that is going to be managing that specific task, they can, this is the email that they get. And you'll also see that they can opt in to receive notification that people have joined their task. So it's really handy. It cuts out that middleman of you having to manage the task coordinator and manage the volunteers. You just have to, you put your trust in the task coordinator and roll with it. Now, quick example of the user experience. So this is a very basic setup, very simple. It's just asking for the specific tasks that you'll see the judge, the swag manager, and then the specific time slots if they have them. You have your details, your location, and then you can see at the bottom the resources needed. And then you get to your confirmation page. You literally just go ahead and you submit on the left hand side. You see your waiver, you agree to it, submit, and then you get your confirmation letting you know what you just signed up for, as well as any additional detail that you choose to add to your registration. And that is it y'all. Volunteers is pretty straightforward. Like I said, it is a very simple form to fill out. And once you do it, it you can kind of like set it and then just help with your um, task coordinators to kind of manage that situation for you. So we have a couple of minutes for questions. I actually don't have any questions. Um, just like before, if anyone has anything, um, either now or in the next few minutes in between, you can enter it in the chat. Um, and we will be back at four o'clock. Um, so in 12 minutes for my presentation on um, fundraising event websites. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Whitney.